Hey everybody, welcome to Spiky Saturday number 10 on the Mana Leak. I'm John as always, and we are going to jump into a Cons of Tarkir Swiss draft, and we're going to try to 2-1 uh, two and one it again. Hopefully 3-0. Uh, and oh. I don't know if I have 3-0 and oh to draft yet in this Spiky Saturday series. A lot of 2-1s, but uh, I don't know if that 3-0 and oh has... Uh, been in our grasp just yet but maybe tonight maybe tonight we'll do it uh so yeah i'm gonna hop in here we will see if this queue fills up soon and i will see you guys for the draft hey welcome to the draft we have got our eighth person and we are good to go let me get that recorder out of the way there we opened a rakshasa death dealer interesting option here it's a 2-2 a two -two for two a black and a green uh pay black and a green it gets plus two plus two until on a turn there's no limit on that either or pay black and a green and regenerate it uh black and green would push us into sultai or abzan i think i might be okay with taking that we also have a pine walker a bring low an opulent palace which we'd want back around if we went sultai uh, a long shot squad. I think I'm okay just taking the Rakshasa Death Dealer here. Uh, it's two colors, but it's enemy colors, which means that we do have two clans that we could go, we could go into with it. Uh, we've got a lot of green that could come back around. The second pick here would probably be for me Pine Walker or Bring Low. One of the two, but I think I'll take the Death Dealer here. It's a rare. It'll be splashy. It'll be fun. Uh, Avalanche Tusker is a rare, but it's a three color, meaning you need to be Teamer to play that, or you need to be uh, something with a splash and maybe just not be able to get it out. Uh, so we're just going to ignore that. Uh, so good cards we have here are Arrowstorm, we have Saltai Scavenger, and Hooting Mandrels. Those are the three that I think I'm really looking at. Watcher of the Roost is decent as well. Um, Aerostorm doesn't currently go in our two colors, uh, and it doesn't actually go in either of the clans that we could be in either. Both Scavenger and Mandrills do go to, go uh, go to uh, there we go go into our colors. Uh, <laughs> need to speak better there. Um, I think I like the Scavenger a little bit better than the Mandrills. They're essentially the same thing, just one is one power and toughness less in flies, one's one power and toughness more in tramples, and I like the flying more than I like the trample. So I think we will take that Saltai Scavenger. Mandrills is probably the second pick here, uh, for us anyways, Aerostorm if we were uh, potentially red. Uh, Ultra the Brood, not good, unfortunately. Uh, I do want to build a fun... Uh, just casual constructed deck with it, but it's not playable and limited. We have Kintree Invocation, which goes great with our Death Dealer uh, color-wise. Uh, black green, you get an XX black and green spirit token, uh, where X is the greatest number uh, or greatest toughness among creatures you control. So it could get potentially quite big. We've got an Alpine Grizzly, which I'm not going to take here. A Woolly Loxodon, which I'm not going to take here. I would take both of them later on, but not right now. We haven't yet decided on blue or white, so Treasure Cruise and Force Away. I don't think are really going to push us that way, especially since we have Invocation. Uh, and I think that's about all I have to say about this pack, really. Uh, so Invocation, get in there. <clears throat> uh, let's see, we've got a Teamer tar Charger, which is decent, an Abzan Guide, which might push us Abzan. Or we could just take a Jungle Hollow. We're guaranteed to be black-green so far. I think that's what I do here, actually get the dual lands well I can um, if I had to choose between charger or guide where we are right now I guess I'd probably take the guide and start going Abzan uh, but there is something to be said about taking the team or charger and just staying black green for the time being but we're gonna take the black green dual land and uh, pop that into the sideboard for the moment uh, let's see we've got a sand step citadel that could push us Abzan uh, but even so, it's a black-green duel, uh, even if we don't use that white. And if we do end up Abzan, it's, a, it's an Abzan Triland. Only other pick here, really, is Right of the Serpent, and I'm pretty okay taking the Triland over that, so Triland it is. All right, in this pack, we've got not too much. We've got another Sultai Scavenger, which I think is just going to be the pick. Uh, nothing else in green that I want. That's a good sideboard card, but... Uh, I don't want to take it this early. Uh, pushing us into blue is nothing, and into white is nothing. So just another Saltai Scavenger is a fine pickup. Archer's Parapet goes pretty well with the uh, the Kintry Invocation. Uh, it makes a 5-5 five five on turn 3, potentially. Um, otherwise, there's a long shot squad. 
Ooh, that might be better, actually. I bet I could probably grab one of these parapets at some point. I think I like Longshot Squad a little bit more here. There's also a Mardu Skull Hunter if I was going to be a bit more aggressive. But I think I like the squad over the hunter. Yeah, let's take the long shot squad. Alright, what do we got here? Um, <laughs> red, red, red. Uh, banner, no. Feed the clan, no. So I guess we're looking at Monastery Flock. And maybe playing it, maybe not. Depends on if we go Saltire or not. Or Blossoming Sands, assuming we're going to go Abzan. I guess Monastery Flock's the better pick here. Or we could just take a Swamp. Um, we're going to be playing those for sure. Uh, yeah, the Flock, I suppose. It's not remotely pushing us blue. Uh, I mean, it's a decent card. You know, it's an 05. Uh, and it, it's, a, it's a flying 05, which is pretty good. Uh, but it is a defender. It means it doesn't attack. Uh, the more... It's kind of good. You can kind of surprise flyers and not kill them, but bounce them back. It does help Kintry Invocation, which is okay. But uh, it's just it's not something that's going to push me into Saltai. We are still just Golgari for the moment. We have um, Embodiment of Spring if we wanted to go Saltai. Uh, just a Highland game if we wanted to stay black-green, and I think that's what we're going to do. Arakshasa's Secret helps us get cards in the graveyard for Saltai Scavengers. Um, and Mind Rod is just always fine. It's not great. You don't want to play it. You don't look to play it, but it's okay. Onyildi and Krumar would be good if we do end up Abzan. But I think we're just going to take the uh, the 2-1 two for 2 for here and just uh, stay kind of simple. Uh, so we're going to have to take something not in our colors here. Uh, we've got a Wetland Sandbar, a Disdainful Stroke, a Salt Road Patrol, or a Venerable Lamasu. Well, Salt Road Patrol, I do don't like. I've seen people play it. I don't know if it's right or not. Maybe they just know more than I do. Um, but I don't think I would ever play the sandbar unless I was really up against the wall. Uh, disdainful stroke. Eh. Let's take the salt road patrol. Maybe we do get to go uh, outlasty with it. Um, well, that's a really late treasure cruise. That makes me uh, kind of push back into blue. Uh, we're going to take that. Neither of these are great. I'll take the Molting Snake Skin, but I'm not going to play it, I don't think. Um, I'll take the Scheming. Ain't going to play that. Abzan Banner, not going to play that. Planes, off in the side. So we're still black-green. Uh, we've got two more blue cards than we do white cards. The white card is not remotely pushing me into white. The blue cards are, are okay. Uh, Treasure Cruise is pretty good, and Monastery Flock is okay. Um... I'd still obviously prefer to just fill up on black and green cards. Uh, Two-color decks are really powerful in this format. Let's see what we open. A Rattleclaw Mystic. I need to quickly check the price on that. That is significantly less valuable than I thought. It's only 48 cents. It's in our colors. It gets us some mana, but I don't know if we're going to take it. Let's see what else we have here. A Rite of Serpent, of the Serpent, an Awaken the Bear, a Mardu Horde Chief, a Crippling Chill if we go blue, just a black-green dual land. Um, arg. Yeah, maybe I do just shake the Rattleclaw Mystic. I mean, that three mana is going to be useful. Uh, I may very well end up with the blue. Uh, and it's a 2-1 for 2. You know, at the worst. So I think, yeah, we'll just take that. And let's put that on the morph pile. Uh, Crackling Doom. Oh, I wish I was Mardu. Such a good card. Uh, Saltai Soothsayer, if we go Saltai. There is a Hooting Mandrill sitting over here, which I think I might want a bit more. Just keeping us black-green still. I don't terribly like Saltai Soothsayer, so when it comes to the battlefield, you get to look at the top four cards of your library, put one in your hand, and the rest in your graveyard. So it enables Delve, and it lets you pick the best of your top four. Um, it's a 2-5. It is 5 mana, though. And it's Saltai mana. Eh, I'm just not a huge fan. Hooting Mandrels, on the other hand, is quite good. We are starting to get a lot of Delve cards, though. Um, so we do maybe need a Delve Enabler. We're going to take this here still, uh, but we need to start thinking about that carefully. It also means that uh, during the game, we need to uh, very carefully think about uh, how many cards we're taking out for the delve. 
So this is a Pearl Lake Ancient, so I think we're safe to say we're going to go Assault Eye. Uh, it's a 6-7 with Flash. It can't be countered. It has Prowess for some odd reason, and you can return three lands to return it back to your hand so you can bounce it and uh, uh, save it from spells. That's going to push us Assault Eye. That is a solid card. Um, not much else in this pack. We'd be looking at a Singing Bell Strike since we're now uh, considering going truly Assault Eye. Uh, but otherwise, not much. There's a Dragon Scale Boon, which is all right. But we're going to take the Pearl Lake Ancient for sure. Uh, <laughs> Black Mythic. Empty the Pits. That could be interesting. If this was Wacky Wednesday, that would be a just snap pick. <laughs> uh, I guess it's not much. There's not much else in the pack, really. We're looking at, up against a Throttle. So we could just take that and have some fun with it. I think I do want the throttle more though. I think we might just go with the safe pick here. It is four black. It is another delve card. We already have uh, four cards that we're delving with that we really want to be using. It does just make two two zombies. Um, you have to delve uh, two cards per zombie. Yeah. Maybe in a 60-card deck you could do something, but in a 40-card deck, probably not enough. So we're just taking that throttle. Uh, Ugin's Nexus. Flashback to Wacky Wednesday a few weeks ago. Don't want that. Um, so we've got a Despise Americ Nightblade and Abomination of Gadul. Good cards here. All three of these black cards are solid. Um, let me actually pitch this white card. So Despise, I don't want... Um, so it's between the Nightblade and the Abomination. Both are good creatures. Abomination has the Saltai mana. Merrick Nightblade has the Death Touch and the Outlast. It would give Death Touch to my Longshot squad. Uh, if they were both in the battlefield with counters, they would uh, have Death Touch and Reach. I can probably get an Abomination later. So yeah, let's just take the Merrick Nightblade. <laughs> another Merrick Nightblade. Um, another Saltai Scavenger. I don't want any more, I don't think. Uh, so it's Merrick Nightblade, Water Whirl. That's about it, really. I think I'll just take the uh, the Nightblade again here. Water Whirl is pretty good, but... I don't want to go too heavily blue. I want to be blue for Pearl Lake Ancient. I guess Treasure Cruise and Monastery Flock. Let's take the Nightblade. Uh, Dragon Scale Boon, Sagu Archer. Probably the Archer. I've seen a lot of these go by, and they are pretty good. Uh, they are a pretty good combat trick. Uh, I'm going to be looking to take one at least, but uh, I want the Archer here, I think. And it is a flip card. Uh, let's see, we've got a black-blue duel, which I think I might take here. Hooting Mandrel is pretty good, but uh, I'm really filling up on Delve Creatures. I do want a dual land, uh, so we're going to take that. Uh, Awaken the Bear or Right of the Serpent. Uh, we have Throttle. Right of, right of the Serpent is obviously better at just killing everything. Um, Awaken the Bear is a fun combat trick. Mm, all right, let's take the right. We do need the removal, I think. A lot of six drops, but luckily three of those are delves. Uh, not much here. Uh, we're not going to play any of the cards that we could take, I don't think. Um, so let's take the... Scout would probably be the one that we might play, and I don't think we are. Uh, so let's take that. Alternatively, I could have hated out that Alabaster Kirin. Uh, that would have been an option. We'll take the Singing Bell Strike. Not sure if we'll play it, but uh, we'll take it. Uh, let's take the Rakshasa's Secret. That enables my delve, so that might actually be main deck. Uh, naturalize for the sideboard, for all of those uh, enchantments and artifacts that I fear. I guess into Ghostfire Blade, but uh, odds of that being in the draft are low. Scaldkin, sure, into the sideboard you go. <coughs> And forest, off you go. 
So let's throw these down one slot. Preferably they're going to be more of a four drop, but uh, let's throw them down as five drops. It's an okay curve. Ooh, a siege rhino. I need to check the price on that. Well, it's a buck eighteen, and uh, it is in two of our colors. And then we could splash for the white, so I need to think about it. And there's really not much else. There's a single blue card in Crippling Chill, which is pretty good. Um, there's another Hooting Mandrels, yet another one. We do have the white mana in that uh, Sandstep Citadel, so I think I am just going to take the Siege Rhino. Yeah, let's do it. Um, timely Horde Mate if we were white, but uh, I think that train has sailed, as we say around here. I really don't want more Delve creatures. I liked seeing them at the beginning. I d if I had known I could have gotten them this late, I would have held off a bit. Um, could we just go white? We'd lose that Pearl Lake Ancient. Monastery Flock Treasure Crew Singing Bell Strike. So Horde Mate would get us back the uh, Death Dealer in the Highland game. I guess that's not that great, eh? Don't want another Monastery Flock. I guess I could take another Right of the Serpent. I'm going to be solidly black green, so I don't need to worry too much about the double black. Yeah, let's take that, but look to cut it. Uh, hardened Scales, no thank you. Uh, Chief of the Scale, how many warriors do I have? I have, you're a demon, you're a warrior. You're an archer. You're a mystic, a shaman. You're an assassin. You're archers. You guys are warriors, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have three warriors. Now it's not enough to dip into white anymore. So I guess the abomination is the pick here. Yeah, let's take the abomination. We can always morph it, if nothing else. Uh, Saltai Ascendancy, that's gonna help my delve. Uh, <laughs> debilitating injury, dead drop, skull hunter. There are picks everywhere here. So at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top two cards of your library, put any number of them into your graveyard, and the rest back in the top of your library in any order. It's a decent trigger. That is a decent trigger. There's also a Tusk Guard Captain here that I somehow looked over. Yeesh. I think I might take the Dust Guard Captain. I do need creatures. Um, Salty Ascendancy really helps me set up the Delves, but at the same time, it's also a card that does nothing. Uh, it, it just sits there, and it maybe helps the game and maybe doesn't. Uh, Tusk Guard Captain is a creature. It's going to have potentially reach and death touch if it gets a counter. It's going to give trample to other things. It's a three drop. So we're going to take that. Uh, Sultai Flare. That would be a pretty solid pickup. There's a Disowned Ancestor here as well. Um, so Sultai Flare is toughness for or greater. So that would be my Pearl Ancient, my Hooting Mandrels, my Siege Rhino. Um, these guys, if they get a counter on them, this guy, if he dies when he's pumped up, my Monastery Flock, yeah, I think I'm pretty okay with the Sultai Flare here. Uh, let's see, nothing here. Nope, nothing here. Uh, Weave Fate, probably the best pick for my deck, and I don't know if it would even get played. Um... Dutiful Return, no. Maybe Disdainful Stroke for the sideboard if there's something I desperately see in game one that I want to counter. Yeah, let's do that. And that goes in the sideboard. Uh, let's see. Seek the Horizon. Singing Bell Strike. Not great choices. I could take the Blossoming Sands um, for the Siege Rhino, but I think I'm okay with the Sandsep Citadel as the pick, or as the as the the mana source for it. Um, I guess let's take another Singing Bell Strike. I don't think I'll play it. Uh, what do we got? Nothing? No, we've got a long shot squad. Yeah, I'll take another long shot squad, sure. Need to make some cuts here. Uh, no, there's a Krumar Bond can. I was going to say there's nothing I like here, but okay with that. I don't know if I'll play it. Gonna have to make a number of cuts here. Um, eh, nothing I really want. Let's take the bow. 
Uh, cancel. Somebody's really thinking about their last few picks here. Oh, no, somebody has disconnected. I see the problem. Uh, let's see. We've got a Tranquil Cove. and oh, I guess the Archer's Parapet is just the pick here. I think I'd prefer it over the Monastery Flock, unless I see Flyers in Game 1. So let's put that in and get that Monastery Flock out. So we need to cut three cards. Hmm. Um, Sidisi's pet not getting played. Probably cut the bondkin. Um, what else would we cut? Maybe the Highland game. That puts us at twenty-three. Kind of sucks that Pearlink Ancient is double blue. And we really don't have that much blue in the deck. Dutiful return to the sideboard. Ah, that guy's back. Maybe I cut the treasure cruise. Just because I'm going to be delving for the scavengers and the mandrel. I don't actually want to cut Rakshasa's secret because it does help the delve a bit. <laughs> Somebody took a land over a banner. That's how bad the banners are. Don't play them. If you're playing five colors, don't play them. <laughs> I was going to say maybe, but they're just not good. I believe Alex had commented saying to uh, do raise the banners as a Wacky Wednesday where I take all of the banners. Um, I probably won't do that. I think it would just be too, too, too miserable because <laughs> um, I would have to take them early. And so all the good cards that I might want to cast with the five colors would not be around by the time I could take them. Uh, let's see. So my three drops look bad, but we've got some morph somewhere. You're a morph. You're a morph. You're a morph. Yeah, there we go. And then these guys are delves. So we're going to be conservative and we're going to say that they're going to come down a turn early. They very likely could come down here uh, on turn four, possibly. Or not even necessarily turn four, but be a four drop. Uh, but we're going to be conservative and put them just one away. Uh, Pearl Lake Ancient is going to be probably a bit problematic with that double blue. But I guess I could do Scout the Borders to try to hit that extra island, but no. Um, and I do always have a blue off the Rattleclaw Mystic if need be. So I still need to make one more cut. We've got 16 creatures. Um, hmm. I mean, I like the treasure cruise just to draw into those islands that I need for the Pearl Lake. But maybe it's best to cut it because I'm going to be delving so heavily with my creatures. Yeah, let's cut it. And then we're going to put in uh, Jungle Hollow because we are black green. We're going to put in Dismal Backwater because we need a blue. Sandstep Citadel is going to be our mana source for the Siege Rhino. I don't know if we would put in another Plains or not. Um, I'm kind of okay with one mana uh, source that helps cast the Rhino. Let's see what Magic Online says. 1, 3, 6, 5. Eh? So 6 and 5. So that would be nine black sources and seven green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think that sounds okay. And then four blue sources. I mean, I guess Siege Rhino is pretty important, so maybe two planes would, two white sources would be a viable option. Yeah, let's go with that. So there's our deck. Uh, we've got sideboard options. We have Disdainful Stroke if we see something big in casting cost that we really want to take down. We have a second Singing Bell Strike if perhaps I'm up against a heavy aggro deck. We have Monastery Flock if I see flyers coming at me. We have a Cancel, again, if there's something I desperately want to counter. We have a Treasure Cruise, which maybe should be in the deck, but I don't know. Um, I just I feel I have a lot of other delve things. Uh, Krumar Bondkin, I don't think will get sided in, or Sidisi's Pet, or Dutiful Return, or Mo uh, Molting Snake Skin. Naturalize, as I said, perhaps if they have Ghost Fire Blade or something. But yeah, I think we'll go with that. We will submit this deck, and I will see you guys for round one.